Folks, we got a crazy new update. So many things to talk about. Regular Hearthstone, Battlegrounds. Let's get into it. Hey, buddy, watch this. That's right. We have the patch for the Descent of Dragons hitting today. That preloads all the stuff into the game, which is cool, but we kind of already know all this, except for one thing I want to get into real quick before we jump into the Battlegrounds stuff. Listen to this. Coming soon, Galacron's Awakening. This will be the solo adventure story for Descent of Dragons. We won't spoil too much, but you're going to collect 35 new cards. That means our mid-expansion, you know, normally dungeon run stuff is instead going to be some kind of story mode with new cards like Naxxramas or Blackrock Mountain, the old style, where you get cards for completing it, which so many people have asked for which is great news, but also just 35 new cards is insane. That's gonna be a gigantic meta shakeup in between expansions, which is, in my opinion, absolutely perfect and super exciting. So I'm incredibly pumped for that. I think this news is gonna slide by some people, but don't miss out on that. So stay tuned. We'll learn more eventually, I'm sure. It says we'll get more details. That'll probably be in, yeah, January, okay. Uh, but also, we got some gigantic Battlegrounds updates as well here, including three new heroes, Edwin Van Cleef, Sylvanas, and Archvillain Rafam. Edwin's hero power is going to be called Sharpen Blades. It'll cost one, and it'll give a minion plus one, plus one for each minion you've bought this turn, which uh, can actually be pretty significant when you're doing things like Battle Cry cycling through a turn, uh, you're just buying a minion here, buying a minion there, anything that adds to your board. And uh, this is going to cost you one. You'll be able to target a unit of your choice and give it a gigantic buff. So this might be a little bit less efficient than like Brand Bronzebeard, who anytime you play a Battle Cry minion is buffing something on your board, but it's buffing a random target. So sometimes it hits things that you're going to sell anyway or things you don't really care about. This one you can like always target your Cobalt Guardian. And I think that's going to be a huge advantage over Bran. Now, not every build is going to suit this. Like a beast build, for instance, you might not be buying that many minions in a given turn. It might be hard to find board space to sell them back, although that may change in a future update. I've heard they're going to try to get selling from hand um, possible somewhere down the road. But in the meantime, I think this is absolutely a cool hero. I think this will be a solid mid to upper tier hero. So maybe like a four-star hero. Sylvanas is also coming. Banshee's Blessing, it costs zero and it removes a friendly minion to give adjacent minions plus one, plus one. Uh, so if you have something on board here, you can just wipe it and you'll give your two minions next to it plus one, plus one. So instead of like selling it, you just remove it. You don't get the gold back presumably, but this does cost zero, so it's free. So you're kind of spending one gold in a way to give adjacent things a plus one, plus one buff. So for each gold you spend, uh, you're going to get plus two, plus two total. And again, you can control exactly which minions get this buff, which is pretty cool. And um, I think that's uh, reasonably good as well. It might create some awkward moments. Maybe you only get to use it once per turn, right? So it's kind of got a limit on its scalability. So I wouldn't say it goes quite as far as Edwin's, but uh, still does retain some utility. So maybe like a three-star hero. And then Archvillain Rafam, I'll take that. It costs one. And next combat, you'll add a plain copy of the first minion you kill to your hand. Note, this is an unbuffed, non-golden copy. So uh, that's actually pretty cool because you spend one gold and you get something that's theoretically worth three gold, right? And often it's going to be a good unit too because your opponent's going to be running awesome stuff. So if you kill like their Cave Hydra first, you can get a Cave Hydra. And if you remember your opponent's fights well enough, then you might be able to essentially just um, target things by positioning the right way and trying to kill their Nightmare Amalgam first, whatever it is, right? Or swipe into something and kill it first. A Light Fang Enforcer at the end of their board, you can swipe it and kill it first. Although your opponent can also play around that. Now, I will say I think this lacks some utility in the late game because uh, like a non-buffed minion super late into the game isn't really going to add a lot of value to your hand other than just the ability to sell it, but you kind of spent the one gold anyway, so it's like, well, that's a wash. But in the early game, this could be pretty crazy. Getting an extra minion, some extra resources, something good to build around, all pretty powerful. So I would say Rafam feels like a four-star hero. Also, we've got some heroes leaving, which are Patches the Pirate, Bartendotron, Pyramid, Professor Putricide, and Trade Prince Gallywix. My guess is 
These are lower win rate heroes that are leaving. And then heroes returning as well, which are um, Maleficent Mana Storm and Lich Bazial. Now, I don't know if this talks about it. Oh, it does. Okay, so I think Maleficent's going to be nerfed. She's going to have plus one attack instead of plus one attack and plus one health. So she's coming back, but she's coming back considerably weaker. Now, for mechs, because they rely on Divine Shield a lot, the health buff maybe doesn't hurt as much, but it's certainly still, of course, significant. Health is often very important and sometimes more important in Battlegrounds, but not necessarily when Divine Shields are in the equation. And then, uh, oh, we've also got some... Uh, I know I just skipped over these minions, but we'll get there. We've also got uh, some, some balance changes to heroes. Patchwork getting nerfed, going to 50 health instead of 60. That's a really big deal, because some fights in the late game, you take way more than 10 damage, and this means that... Patchwork maybe doesn't really even gain an entire fight of health. Where when you gain 20, that's you know maybe a fight and a half, even two mid-game fights. But now I think that hurts him pretty significantly. I think he's giving up too much now to other people's hero powers for too small of a gain. AFK getting nerfed. Instead of getting a Tavern Tier 4 and Tier 3 unit, she's instead going to get two Tavern Tier 3 units. That's a really significant nerf because Tavern Tier 4 has some big meaty stuff like the security rovers, uh, the siege breakers, things that win her rounds for like two or three rounds and deal, of course, extra damage as well. So that's a really significant nerf. Rat King going from plus one, plus two to plus one, plus one. Uh, that just kind of makes sense. Plus one, plus one has been the standard. Uh, Rat King was really strong. This is going to help uh, prevent him from taking so many value trades in the early game. I think that's a good change, but Rat King will remain strong. Lich Baziel actually getting... Um, getting buffed she's going to take two damage when she hits her hero power now instead of three which uh is actually a pretty significant difference right 33 percent buff basically and that'll help keep her alive a lot and then akazam's rat getting nerfed as well uh ice block will be harder to get consecutively we don't know exactly what that means it's pretty broad but uh it was kind of frustrating sometimes to see you know four ice blocks in a row so, we've also got some new minions here. I will say, I think these are the golden versions of the minions that are not gold-looking, because Floating Watcher here, this is not the default state of Floating Watcher. So, uh, I think this is supposed to be a 6-3 that gives plus 2, plus 2, and this is a 4-4 that gives plus 2, plus 2, and these are the upgraded golden versions. But King Begurgle here is a 5-cost Murloc, now the only 5-cost Murloc since uh, Primal Fin Lookout got buffed. And that's uh, pretty cool because he has a battle cry and death rattle effect, which means when you cycle him onto the board as a battle cry, you can kind of leave him there. Normally, when you play a battle cry minion, it's just like stuck on board and you're kind of sad because it doesn't really do much. Like a defender of Argus is just a 2 3 or whatever. But now with King Burger Girl, because of its death rattle, that means you can leave it on board after you've cycled it as a battle cry and it's still impacting your board. It's still going to buff stuff and uh, pretty significantly as well. It's kind of got the like Goldrin buff on the death rattle plus the battle cry so if you can start cycling these at tier five on the way to say your gentle megasaur at six then that's pretty powerful this looks like a really really good unit for murlocs and murlocs aren't already in a bad spot they're pretty solid and you also have floating watcher incoming uh for demon builds here uh this guy is perfect for heroes like lich Baziel, where you're damaging yourself or wrath weaver where you're damaging yourself and it can scale really really fast as a tier three unit, which is nice. You get some big stats probably between Wrathweaver and this scaling. Demons can get really big really fast. The challenge is still gonna be though that this is very weak to Poisonous and very weak to Divine Shield. So I don't know that this really helps demons in the late game, but it probably does bolster their mid game a lot so they can just like crush opponents in the mid game. And then hopefully that's enough to play for like a top four position, even if you're not intending to win the game. So certainly still a high utility uh, unit for demons so those are both welcome additions we also have uh stats here now apparently i mean we'll check these out in game i don't think there's a lot to talk about here note on performance uh continuing efforts to improve there is a new in-game shop again we'll just check this out in game i haven't seen it yet but uh apparently it's gonna have some pretty cool new stuff alternate heroes etc oh that's not rolling out yet that's gonna roll out december 9th and 10th with the new expansion, potentially. We also have uh, Taronda returning, which so many people want. Uh, you just claim Taronda for free by going to the new shop. Oh, sick, okay, awesome. And then also Sylvanas is here for $10. 
Sylvanas, Windrunner, Hunter, Hero, and Cardback. This got spoiled a little bit, but she looks awesome, and she is indeed for Hunter. Uh, and then the current heroes for sale are rotating on the 10th. We kind of already knew that. Seth's going back to Wild. We knew that. There's a Wintervale celebration with the creepy new tree bundle. We knew that. There's an arena rotation here. Not going to spend too much time on that because I can't really provide valuable insights. Oh, this is an important change. Echo is being nerfed, which is ironic given the uh, <laughs> the uh, Carterville stream yesterday where there was a very severe Echo for the first 10 minutes. Uh, so copies of Echo cards can no longer cost less than one, nerfing essentially, um, you know, uh, Snip Snap Warlock in wild format where you can do crazy stuff. It's kind of funny. I recommended this change in a YouTube video like a year ago because somebody gave me some flack in a custom card video where they were like, if this card goes to zero, Regis, it's infinite damage. And I was like, well, I don't know, just cap Echo at one. Who cares? Like, it's easy to make that change. And here we are a year later, that happened. <laughs> so um, you're going to get full dust refund on three cards, which is pretty insane. That's kind of cool. Good for them. Uh, particularly Snip Snap is uh, oh normal only. So the gold version you got for free, you don't get dust. That would be a lot of dust. So kind of makes sense. Uh, Zephyrus improvements are coming. That's cool. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail on these. Got some bugs where new cards are getting offered. So Faceless Manipulator and Matt Shadow Madness, King Crush, etc. That's pretty cool. And um, Battlegrounds, we had some fixes. Uh, oh, Replicating Menace is going to be doubled now, actually. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Ice Block can no longer trigger during the recruit phase, so don't accidentally kill yourself. And... Uh, Let's see. Battlegrounds. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, these are not battleground changes. This is Shervala and weapons. I was going to say, these things don't make sense for battlegrounds, but these are the battleground changes. These are other bug fixes. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on these. If you want to dig those up, you can go into this blog post. But yeah, Descent of Dragons on the way. Major battlegrounds changes. 35 new cards incoming. Uh, performance improvements, new heroes. This is like A plus home run patch. Go Blizz, man. That's awesome. I'm excited. Uh, that said, if you have any questions on this, feel free to ask in the comments below. If I can't chime in, somebody else might have some info for you. Otherwise, we're going to head into Battlegrounds here soon on my Twitch stream. So come join me on Twitch if you want to see some of this new Battlegrounds stuff in action. If you don't want to head to Twitch, it's going to be on YouTube too eventually. So just stay tuned. Right here, drop the sub, and uh, you'll get more updates in the near future. In the meantime, let's zoom in on this horrifying tree. Where did she go? Here she is. <laughs> we'll zoom in on this. Where'd she go? No. Where is she? There she is. Zoom in on this horrifying tree, and uh, thanks much for watching, and until next time, game on.